Hello. Good morning, everyone. I think we, we are ready to start. Uh, I want to welcome you at the Mayor's Making the Most of EU Funds for Roma Inclusion Conference and Award Ceremony. My name is Violetta Naidenova. I'm going, going to be your host, host for uh, the two days. days. So you will see me a lot. Uh, before starting the event, uh, I will ask you to check your smart devices for making sure that you have a translation. So uh, maybe we can see at the, at the screen the languages. The first one is Bulgarian, the second is English, the third is French, four is German, fifth is Hungarian, Six is Romanian, a seven is Serbian, and eight is Slovakian. I hope that you all turned on the right channel so you can have a, a translation. Yeah? Okay, great. So we will start by a welcome speech by Laszlo Andor, the Commissioner for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. And uh, Laszlo Andor uh, was not able to come, but he prepared a special video message for you. And we are going to start with that. So let's hear uh, Laszlo Andor. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret that I cannot be with you today to personally encourage public authorities to make the most of EU funds for Roma inclusion, as the title of this conference says. Improving the quality of spending is crucial in order to turn our Europe 2020 strategy for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth into reality and to ensure that Roma integration strategies do not remain on paper. The European Commission asked Member States to prepare national Roma integration strategies last year. This was an important step towards Roma social and economic inclusion. I must say the Commission is fully aware that strategy papers by themselves offer no guarantee of real impact on the ground. Many national strategies, unfortunately, remain silent on the involvement of regional and local authorities and civil society. I hope to see this gap filled when it comes to implementation and monitoring. On the other hand, in these strategies we have seen positive examples of countries working together with Roma communities. Finland, for example, despite the relatively small size of its Roma communities, has a very proactive approach. Spain also can be proud of good progress and we have seen some good projects also in Central Europe and the Balkans. To give examples which are going to be discussed today and the awarded projects demonstrate that innovative approaches, shared social values and common interests can deliver benefits to the community in which they operate. Your success shows that a lot has been achieved but a lot more still needs to be done. Good use of the structural funds for Roma inclusion should also promote administrative capacity building and two-way communication. The Commission has taken this into account when we proposed country-specific recommendations on Roma inclusion and also in our proposed multi-annual financial framework for the next programming period. Several key elements of the Commission proposal for future cohesion policy aim to specifically support the inclusion of the most vulnerable, including Roma. We have proposed a specific investment priority to be devoted to the integration of marginalized communities. We have proposed allocating at least 25% of cohesion policy resources to human capital and social investment by the ESF and at least 20% of this amount to social inclusion. My colleague Mr. Zoltan Kozacai, Deputy Director General, is going to share with you some concrete elements which can ensure that money is well spent. Let me, however, just outline some key principles. We should agree that programs have greater impact when they take account of the experience, needs and aspirations of Roma. 
When interventions target areas like employment, education, housing and healthcare simultaneously and when they are adequately resourced and monitored. And we know that measures in these areas are only successful if they are mainstreamed into a non-discriminatory practice. Interventions have worked best when there is a constructive dialogue and partnership between public authorities, civil society and Roma communities at each level. For bringing a real change in the lives of Roma, we also need a long-term political commitment across local, regional, national and European levels. Ladies and gentlemen, the social and economic integration of Roma people remains first and foremost the responsibility of the Member States. Nevertheless, the Commission provides fora to share experience like this one today. The European level can also help by mobilizing funding, promoting transparency and monitoring results. But real progress can only come from local initiatives. Once political priorities are translated into funding priorities, resources need to be used properly on the ground. And this simple it cannot happen without the active involvement of mayors. The mayors who are here today perform much better than the average. They demonstrate that when there is a will, there is a way. Their example should inspire all mayors across Europe. Mayors, however, need encouragement to pursue their efforts. I can assure you that my services will continue to support initiatives like yours. Let's see each other again in two years' time at the next MERI conference to take stock of progress made. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, we thank uh, Commissioner Laszlo Andor for informing us that there will be uh, a next uh, event of MERI. This is great to hear. Uh, the next opening speech will be uh, by Zoltan Kazuchai. He's Deputy Director General of Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion from the European Commission. Mr. Kazuchai, the floor is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As you may have heard from the Commissioner, <coughs> I would like to share with you some of the points which are related to the actual implementation of the policy which, European, which the European Union established concerning the Roma issues, which is an issue we have to tackle in a very wise way and we have to tackle it uh, as fast as it is possible. I know that among you there are many mayors, other representatives of local and regional authorities, as well as stakeholders from the European Union countries and also from the neighboring countries. You are here today because you all put your knowledge, efforts and time resources to engage and to make a positive difference in the field of the Roma inclusion. The social economic situation of the Roma has been very high on the European agenda. The European Commission has made important steps and developments since 2008 to advance and accelerate the process of Roma inclusion and to ensure continuous progress in the future. However, the European Union and the Member States joint efforts towards Roma inclusion will be successful only if, only, if all actors from the European level down to the local level are going to be involved. This is why the Commission has convened this conference today. It is about bringing you, those involved in the local decision-making processes, into the loop of the European framework for the Roma inclusion and to encourage you to make the best use of the European funds for the Roma inclusion. It is taken for granted that the member states are primarily responsible for the designing and implementing Roma integration policies. Nevertheless, 
the European Union level also has an important role to play. The European added value is our ability to mobilize EU-level policies and instruments for the Roma integration. These policies and instruments make up the European framework for Roma inclusion, which the Commission adopted last year. One key element of the European framework is the Europe 2020 strategy. It is a strategy for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth in order to build our economic and social model in a balanced way. The Europe 2020 provides, indeed, for a right policy context to improve the social economic situation on disadvantaged groups and, in particular, the Roma. It focuses on the employment situation of the Roma, their education, poverty and social exclusion closely linked to health and housing problems. Since social exclusion is often the result of several interrelated problems, responses require an integrated strategic approach. Our relevant policies should target Roma in an explicit but not in an exclusive way. We all know that it is easy to call for targeted policies that reach out to the Roma. But to avoid separation and division in the society, we should try to use much more a territorial, multidimensional approach to poverty and social exclusion. As you heard it, Commissioner Andor in his video message has just highlighted absolute importance of input coming from local and national authorities. Only if they are actively involved can a real change in the lives of the Roma be implemented on the ground. The European Commission is determined to underpin these efforts by extending its continuous help and support not only at a policy level but through its financial tools, namely with the European Union funds. The cohesion policy, as a whole, provides considerable support to all regions. Uh, 350 billion euros has been allocated across the 27 member states for the period of 2007-2013. Out of this amount, 75 billion euros are allocated to the support provided by the European Social Fund. This is a substantial commitment of resources and effort. Not all the money goes to purposes or targets serving uh, the Roma inclusion uh, issues, but a great part of it is there. And we would like to see part of this spent money on initiatives even further on, uh, which is going to have a positive result on the Roma community everywhere in the European Member States. Bearing that in mind, the Commission's proposal for the new cohesion policy, including the regulation on the European Social Fund, aims to step up the European Union's support for Roma in the next financial period, which starts in 2014. We are going to address this issue with several elements, several uh, areas. First of all, member states would need to identify geographical areas most hit by, the, by poverty or target groups at highest risk of discrimination, exclusion, and to put forward a coherent multidimensional strategy to address the specific needs of these areas and those target groups. Then, a specific investment priority from the European Social Fund would be devoted to the integration of marginalized, marginalized uh, communities, such as the Roma. Further, an ex-ante conditionality would apply regarding the existence and appropriateness of national Roma integration strategies. And this is very important, because if this condition, set of conditions 
is not going to be met by the individual member states. There could be a financial consequence on the member state itself. So it is better for them to get in line with the rest of the other member states to be able to, sur to solve the problems related to the Roma issues. Commissioner Andor has already referred to a very important change. A minimum of 20% of the European Social Fund is intended to be spent on social inclusion in each member state. And we are talking about a huge amount of money at a European level. Then what is very pertinent to local level actors, implementation of locally based multidimensional approaches such as community-led initiatives, integrated local development strategies or integrated territorial investment will be facilitated, uh, will be facilitated certainly. Financially, the European Union support alone cannot solve the problems. And these problems are to be tackled in an extremely complex way, as it was also mentioned by our Commissioner. The implementation and success of national Roma integration strategies will be very much dependent on sufficient national resources being allocated to concrete interventions in the areas of education, labor market and social integration. Let me say a few words about the common responsibility issue. A co-ownership with the local, regional and national authorities is indeed very important so that the Roma inclusion becomes a reality in the villages, towns and in the regions everywhere in Europe. I therefore very much welcome the launch of the MERI network today. With this initiative, the Open Society Foundations are putting in place a much needed platform for local authorities. The platform serves the purpose of exchanging, learning and supporting each other uh, on the basis of the uh, information they provide you with each other. Local authorities, in particular mayors, usually are in direct contact with Roma communities and have a major role regarding the practical implementation of the socio-economic inclusion of those specific communities. Also, the development of the cooperation between the MERI network and other networks active at various levels in promoting Roma inclusion should, also, should be supported. The cooperation among networks of local and regional authorities will play a major role in the European framework for the Roma inclusion. It is also crucial that all stakeholders at all levels are involved in this work. The representatives of Roma communities have essential role in ensuring that the Roma integration strategies are appropriate and implemented uh, effectively. What elements are needed for the success of actions of this inclusion? First of all, a consequent strong political commitment is needed. And commitment is a nice thing, but without money you are not going to be able to step forward. So the other important target is to establish the right financial resources. And uh, we also have to have realistic expectations about the possible level and speed of the desired socio-economic changes targeting Roma communities. Let's be realistic. We are not going to transform the situation on the field within a very short time. But we can at least see already some results of the often very difficult work being carried out. Commissioner Andor has announced in this message that in two years' time we will convene a next meeting of mayors who make <coughs> the most of the European Union funds for Roma inclusion. The 
Commission expects you all, and uh, hopefully many others are going to join you uh, in improving uh, in the process of improving the living and working conditions of the Roma communities in the future. As a conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, let me assure you that the European Commission will continue supporting you with the concrete policy framework and with the European Union funding. Also, in the future, to address social economic challenges of the Roma communities and in the longer run as well, if there is a need, if need uh, be uh, for that. Let me thank you sincerely for your attention and I wish you a very good conference for today. Thank you, Mr. Kazachai, uh, for informing us about the instruments of the European Commission uh, uh, on Social Inclusion and Affairs. Uh, our next uh, distinguished speaker is Tuanda Mutasa. He is Director of Programs of the Open Society Foundations. Mr. Mutasa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Vili. Uh, um, Mr. Scholz and Kazak Shei, the Deputy Director General for Employment and Social Inclusion. Um, we already have heard uh, from the commissioner. We can't see him now. I was seeing him when he was speaking, but uh, we also will speak to him through you. Uh, but we also salute him uh, for the work that he is doing. Uh, Dominic Bear, the chief organizer, on behalf of um, the commissioner, uh, Alfonso Zadi, um, my colleague um, who is working at the Council of Europe, uh, and uh, with whom I have been uh, discussing a number of issues. Uh, mayors from 15 countries, um, that is mayors and municipal leaders that are here, uh, the leaders of our um, uh, Roma work within Open Society Foundations, uh, Kauman Miche, uh, Petra Kovacs, and Mjeliko um, Jovanovic, and others. Uh, colleagues that are Roma NGO leaders and friends of the cause of Roma inclusion that are in the room. Um, I would like to take the opportunity uh, to appreciate immensely uh, the opening statement that we had uh, from uh, Commissioner Anto, which I thought was uh, an inspiration uh, for us in the Open Society Foundations, but also for um, the mayors that are gathered here. Uh, Open Society Foundations has over the years uh, spent no less than $200 million uh, on Roma issues uh, and across the foundations globally uh, we have at least 70 staff members that are working on issues of Roma engagement and inclusion. It is clear, at least in terms of these figures, particularly from the perspective of the limited resources that Open Society Foundations is able to deploy uh, as a foundation's uh, community uh, of um, uh, an individual donor, that Roma issues are a huge commitment for us indeed. But more than money and more than people, uh, Roma issues are also about the contribution of ideas. They are also about the contribution of experience. And they are also about the contribution of global networks with which we are engaged that are fighting uh, for the inclusion of minority groups, for the inclusion of those that are marginalized, and for the inclusion in the human rights of demographies that others may forget. Why is it important that you have embarked on the kinds of conversations that we are going to have uh, for the next one and a half days here? It is obvious that the real work or where the rubber is the road, uh, as we would say in the United States, uh, happens 
at the municipal level. This is where decisions around healthcare, decisions around paving of roads, around uh, piping of water, around education, around the other things that we need to access in our daily life are actually being undertaken. So it is a privilege that we have the opportunity to work with mayors that are involved at this level of work. Yet at the same time, we also think in the partnership that Open Society Foundation has begun together with um, um, the colleagues that are here uh, as mayors and municipal leaders, but also together with um, uh, those in the NGO community that are working on these issues. We have an opportunity to model good practice in Roma inclusion. We have the opportunity to be able to learn from things that we have implemented, as will be the example that we will see when the awards uh, from the 24 cases uh, that are coming out of the 104 cases that we submitted uh, to our Making the Most program um, for EU funds will demonstrate that there is a lot that we can learn about good practice, or some may say best practice, on what to do with the funds that Commissioner Ando indicated uh, the European Union has availed for the support of Roma inclusion. But beyond these learnings, we also hope that as mayors, as municipal leaders, you continue to build on your good efforts to ensure that Roma inclusion is not just about Roma, that it is also about social transformation beyond Roma, that it is also about how we live together as human beings, that on the basis of our engagement with the inclusion of Roma, we also involve the wider society in thinking about honoring and respecting the human rights of all, and therefore that our work on Roma becomes not sectarian work, but work that is inclusive. At the same time, I would hope that we will see the opportunity of this work as affording us not just the moment to do pilot projects, but also the moment to think about how our projects can escalate to the level of policy at the national level. I would therefore hope that part of the conversations that we are going to have uh, in the next several hours will enable us to see how the pilots that we are generating can also inform national policy. How these pilots and the ideas that we have learned and generated can inform the journey forward in the next phase in 2014 to 2020. But also how the leveraging that is being done of the work on the ground can ultimately acquire the most important meaning uh, that it has to acquire, which is that it cannot be about the models that we are implementing. It cannot be about the number of cars that we have bought in our offices for Roma inclusion. It cannot be about the uh, officers that we have established for Roma inclusion. It is ultimately about how the lives of Roma people are being transformed on the ground. You know the story, and I will conclude with this, of um, a group of uh, fishermen uh, in the place where I was born, somewhere in Southern Africa, that gathered and decided that they wanted to become fishermen. And for a period of about 10 years, they met and discussed the habits of fish. They discussed how to catch fish. Uh, some of them even acquired doctorates in physiology. Uh, they established colleges for fishing. They established models for how to best fish. But one thing they never did, they never fished. I'm privileged that in, I'm in company that recognizes that ultimately everything that we are doing will only be counted as meaningful if we are able to see that child in a Roma ghetto going to a school where previously she could not have attended. And that young boy in a Roma ghetto who would otherwise have been sick and unattended to being able to get treatment 
but also that woman in our communities who is not Roma, beginning to see through the agency of our work as mayors the transformative experience of engaging in a community of human beings. I am privileged, therefore, to be part of the opportunity of this conference, and I wish you well in your deliberations over the next several hours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mutasa. Sometimes it is indeed, uh, actually it is indeed simple as it is when we deal with uh, human beings and their uh, well-being. Uh, but we often forget that. Um, the next opening speech will be by Alfonso Zardi, Head of Democracy, Institution Building and Garments Department of Council of Europe. Mr. Zardi. Thank you. Deputy Director General, distinguished representative of Open Society Foundations, directors, mayors, elected officials, and other representatives of municipalities, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me pleasure to be with you today at the opening of this important meeting and to convey to you the greetings and appreciation of our Secretary General Torbjörn Jagland. Being prevented from participating in person to this event, he wishes through me to testify the value the organization attaches to the action of the European Commission and the Open Society Foundations with regard to combating the discrimination against the Roma population and promoting Roma inclusion, and to the valuable cooperation our organizations have established in this domain. For the Council of Europe, rising to the challenges that Roma exclusion poses to European societies means simply to remain faithful to its principles, to its genetic code, if I may say so. This organization was established over 60 years ago in order to protect and foster human rights and fundamental freedoms with a view to making our democratic societies immune from the viruses of intolerance, discrimination and hate. A lot has been achieved, and it would be utterly unfair not to acknowledge the progress made in all member states with a view to adopting the necessary legal provisions, meeting the requirements of the European Convention of Human Rights, and adopting the policies that would promote social cohesion, respect for diversity, access to education, and culture for all. Yet, as the present economic crisis eloquently proves, a lot still remains to be done. Societal tensions, prompted by economic woes, challenge the covenant on which our democracy are based. The risk is real that in the adversity, some segments of the population, those most severely affected, look for easily, easy culprits. That political movements and parties advocate policies that would stigmatize the weak and the diverse. That populism gain grounds and trust in institutions and their capacity to deliver effective democratic governance dramatically drops. This is a challenge the Council of Europe is fully aware of and ready to take up. By enabling a fully-fledged debate to take place on the future of democracy, by raising awareness of member states about critical features of their policies in respect of the weaker segments of the population, and by taking initiatives with a view to stimulating and enhancing the effectiveness of domestic policies to tackle exclusion and discrimination, and this includes our action for greater Roma inclusion. This action is multifaceted and focuses on practical cooperation between member states at all levels in order to induce real change. Let me start by recalling the Strasbourg Declaration on Roma of October 2010, in which our member states underlined the importance of ensuring, and I quote, focused, sustained, and effective cooperation regarding Roma as the pan -European, at the pan-European level between member states, regions, local authorities, and European organizations, drawing on the many examples of good practice which exist at European, national, regional, and local level. Immediately after the Strasbourg Conference, the Secretary General appointed the Special Representatives for Roma Issues with the task of coordinating the implementation of the Strasbourg Declaration. 
Member states were invited to focus on the implementation of policies and to share experiences about the measures that work well for Rome inclusions and those that do not. An ad hoc committee of experts on Roma issues, CAROM, was set up to enable exchanges of practice and learning from the others. At the request of a member state, small groups of experts from different countries work together on a specific policy question, analyzing the situation in the requesting country and offering ways to improve it. School attendance, the role of local authorities and social housing solutions have been the subject of such peer reviews. Topics that will be addressed in the forthcoming months include ending school segregation and addressing the lack of sites for travelers. An online database on Roma-related policy and good practices has been created. It already includes about 40 good practices identified in Member States through Council of Europe committees and monitoring bodies, by the Commissioner for Human Rights and by international partners. The OSF MARI network can make a very useful contribution to this exercise by providing further examples of promising practices. The Council of Europe is an intergovernmental organization, bringing together member states' representatives at both the political level, the ministers, as in the case of the Strasbourg high-level meeting, and the administrative level, in the framework of senior officials or ad hoc committee of experts such as CAROM. But it is also unique in providing a forum for local and regional authorities to voice their needs and experience and to engage them in concrete action in pursuance of the goals of the organization. We all agree, and your presence at this meeting is the eloquent proof of this, that the local level is where Roma inclusion, or, or rather, and very often Roma exclusion, to begin with, takes place. It is at local level, therefore, that action needs to be taken and measures to be implemented. Accordingly, the action of the Roma Special Representative focused on mediation at local level and our Congress of Local and Regional Authorities also mobilized its members on developing a new approach to Roma issue. As regards mediation, the Roma Ed training program for Roma mediators started last year in cooperation with the European Commission is now being implemented in 25 countries. The employment of mediators in our member states has brought positive results. In those areas where mediators are deployed, a higher number of Roma have access to education, healthcare, employment. The institutions have a more adapted way of addressing Roma needs, and mutual relations have improved. But what mediation are we talking about? Experience shows that in order to be effective, it needs to be impartial and human rights based. This lesson has led to the elaboration and ultimately adoption, very recently, by the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe of a recommendation to Member States on mediation as an effective tool for promoting respect for human rights and social inclusion of Roma. More than 850 mediators, mostly Roma, have been trained so far by a group of experienced trainers. The common aim of the European Commission and the Council of Europe is to have a total of 1,000 mediators trained by the end of this year, and I am confident that this target will be reached. Several countries have included mediation in their national Roma integration strategies, and as a result, some countries have started a process of institutionalization of mediators. In other countries, the number of, of mediators have been increased, and they are now focusing on the quality of their work. As regards the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities, a year ago, in September 2011, a summit of mayors on Roma was organized in cooperation with the Special Representative and the support of OSF, which continued afterwards. Participating cities and regions agreed to establish a European alliance of cities and regions for Roma inclusion as a framework for cooperation, sharing of practices, strengthening local and regional capacity for action, identifying specific problems and proposing solutions, and helping to ensure funding 
for Rome activities at the grassroots level. The work of developing the Alliance as a complementary tool together with the ROMED program and the work of CAROM is currently taking place under the auspices of the Congress and the Special Representative for Roma Issues. Let me stress the importance of this alliance and the role of the Congress in this regard in order to achieve the objectives of the Strasbourg Declaration. The local level is crucial to the success of our endeavours. Mayors and municipal councillors, as well as local communities, have a fundamental role to play. Their awareness and their capacities need to be strengthened. Experiences need to be shared and international cooperation is required for that purpose. International organizations, both governmental and non-governmental, networks of cities and regions, and representatives of the European Commission were present and took part in the debate. Representatives from OSF also took part, presented the Mary plans and stated their readiness to cooperate with the Alliance. This pronouncement is appreciated and we look forward to developing in due time the appropriate mechanisms focusing on concrete achievables and realistic deadlines. Directors, mayors, ladies and gentlemen. Last but not least, let me mention before concluding the role of another Council of Europe body, relatively little known but nonetheless relevant and effective, the Council of Europe Development Bank. This bank was established in 1956 and funds through loans and direct grants projects in the field of housing, vocational training, local economic development and social inclusions. inclusion. It is also deeply committed to the cause of Roma inclusion and is seeking new ways to increase its interventions to the service of Roma, including help to channel EU funds to Roma projects. Having recalled initiatives recently taken by the Council of Europe, let me to conclude stress three points. This work is a long-term one. It requires the commitment of all the actors concerned, governments, local authorities, NGOs, Roma representatives. And it offers plenty of opportunities for cooperation between European and international institutions, such as the European Commission and the OSF. We are looking forward to further work together with OSF, MERI, as well as with other networks and groupings committed to Roma inclusion. And I am certain that today and tomorrow we'll see inspiring discussions that will serve our common endeavour to achieve significant progress towards the full inclusion of Roma communities. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Zardi, for informing us about Council of Europe instruments, uh, how they can be used in Roma inclusion. Thank you very much for that. And um, the last speaker for the first part of the morning session is Kalman Mije, co-chair of the Open Society Foundation's Roma Policy Board and chair of Making the Most of EU Funds for Roma. Uh, Mr. Mije will launch the Mary Network. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, dear Deputy uh, Director General, dear Boss, dear Mr. Zardi, dear mayors, municipal and NGO leaders, and dear friends, as um, Violetta said, uh, my honorable task is to officially launch the, uh, the MEDI network, uh, which uh, we hope is going to serve the cause as uh, Tuanda's uh, final remarks suggested to, the, uh, to a happy end, to, uh, to an end uh, by which our Roma citizens of our countries will enjoy the same opportunities, the same rights, and the same dignity as everybody else. So um, let me refer back uh, to uh, to very, very inspiring uh, opening remarks by, uh, by the speakers. Uh, uh, first of all, to Laszlo Andor, who uh, is really in Brussels the engine of the cause of Roma. I'm sure all of you know he's working tirelessly uh, to convince uh, his colleagues 
that we have to deal on the European level, as uh, Deputy Director Kozacai mentioned, to help the countries to, uh, to solve this largest social injustice of our continent of the present time. I remember two years ago, uh, our founder, George Soros, visited uh, the Roma Veritas in Budapest, Judith Sira, who is sitting here, uh, was uh, guiding him there. And uh, one of the Roma students asked him, uh, Mr. Soros, why are you putting so much money in us? And then George said, as, as usual, it is very simple manner, because this is the largest injustice in Europe, and I care for Europe. So, uh, so it is the largest injustice in, uh, in Europe, and uh, the European nations, particularly those with uh, significant Roma minorities, have an undeniable responsibility to their Roma communities to, uh, to rectify this uh, centuries-long uh, accumulated social injustice. But by the way, they also have a responsibility to their majorities because without a dignifying process of integrating the Roma, the majorities cannot be uh, happy either. In uh, pre-World War II Hungary, uh, people said that uh, in a country of three million beggars, you cannot be happy, even if you don't belong to the beggars. Equally, we cannot be happy, we representatives of the majorities, if we see our Roma fellow citizens suffering uh, shamed in undignified lives. So here, those people are gathering who on the local level want to, uh, want to solve this problem. And uh, last Andor very rightly said that uh, the national Roma integration strategies that were initiated by, uh, by the European Commission and supported by the then Hungarian uh, presidency of the European Union, these strategies have been prepared by uh, December last year in, in most countries. Uh, we also, also have to say, uh, Mr. Deputy Director General, that uh, there is, besides the one that uh, last Andor mentioned, there is a lot to improve in these strategies. So we, uh, we hope that the Commission is going to, to continue to push the countries to, to improve and make operational these strategies. And one of, the, one of the areas, or maybe the most important area where the strategies are not operational, is uh, linking the national strategies to the local level. And uh, that really is the test of how serious, for the moment, these strategies are. I think it's fair to say, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, that just looking at these strategies, it's clear that you could do better with more uh, help from the national level in terms of incentives, in terms of money, but in also in terms of uh, real leadership in solving this most burning social uh, problem of, uh, of your countries. I want to say that uh, our uh, organization, the Open Society Foundations, uh, including the Making the Most uh, of EU Funds for Roma program, including the great uh, Roma initiatives program of our uh, foundations with Jaiko Jovanovic's leadership. We are go going to work with you and we are going to advocate to really uh, agitate for you in the, uh, in the uh, national levels uh, until the programs are really the national programs, Roma strategies are going to be uh, truly operational. And the test again of them being truly operational is that they help you. We also 
encourage you to to lobby for this in the uh, in the national level through your uh, local uh, admin, uh, local you know municipalities association uh, local administration associations in every country it's a little different but you have your associations and they should also in a very programmatic way uh, uh, advocate uh, with governments for for much better uh, national Roma integration strategies and if you, if you need our help we will be there. Now, in terms of opening the MERI network, which I, as I said, we think and we hope is going to be um, uh, a long-lasting uh, network, so it's not a one-time event where we gather and then we forget about each other. Let me outline uh, what we think, how to, how to build this. Uh, together with the uh, uh, European Commission, and here I also would like to, uh, to acknowledge very warmly the fantastic help of the staff of uh, Mr. Andor, of Mr. Kazachai, Dominic Bay particularly, who was here two minutes ago, but he's already making sure somewhere that the uh, conference is, is moving uh, smoothly. It has been a fantastic process with the Commission. We feel that we are not alone. But we also feel that we are not alone uh, Again, in the OSF community, uh, uh, my boss, Tuanda Mutasa, uh, mentioned that uh, George Soros has invested already $200 million into the cause. We have 70, at least 70 staff who work uh, directly or, uh, on improving the situation of the Roma and on a harmonious integration of the Roma citizens into their national societies. But we also count on an ever-deepening partnership with uh, the United Nations Development Program in many countries and regionally work together with them, with the Council of Europe. Uh, 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 you, Mr. Zardi, mentioned the Council of Europe uh, Development Bank, which we appreciate, and the bank also is increasingly trying to figure out how to help uh, with its own uh, specific tools, but also on the Alliance of Cities and Regions for Roma Inclusion, the EuroCities uh, Network, and other uh, local level networks. What do we want to do? Uh, we would like to, uh, besides this conference and after this conference, uh, and linking those two years and, and, and later that uh, last Lander mentioned, and we certainly will be very, very enthusiastic partners to, to see in two years' time even better uh, examples of, uh, of local level uh, action for the kind of results that uh, Tuanda Mutasa mentioned where the uh, fisherman is well integrated and knows how to fish as much as the others. So uh, what we would like to do is to respond to your uh, needs for information and knowledge on EU funding, on policies and implemented practices in the area of Roma inclusion. We want to help you to, to get into the loop of the European framework for Roma inclusion and encourage you to make the most of the EU funds for inclusion. I should also say that among the new member states, exactly those countries, and we cannot be shy about it or silent, exactly those countries that need the most to invest into the Roma integration are using the EU funds least in general and in particular for the Roma. And we want to help, and again, we call on you also to make it plain to your national governments that this thing has to change. Uh, we would like also to, uh, to uh, help you with in-country and cross-country peer-to-peer exchanges, sharing of inclusive policies and practices. We would like to help you to access to a pool of uh, MTM and uh, other Open Society Foundation uh, advisors, experts, trainers on inclusive local policies, on making practical the wonderful principle of, of human equity and of mobilization of EU funds for Roma. We also will help you to channel the expertise available for our field partners from our 
project generation facilities on accessing EU funds, designing EU programs and supporting their implementation. And we also have built up a, a virtual space, the Login Mary uh, uh, site, which should become more and more a platform for policy briefs, for case studies and reflection papers on Roma inclusion. We are going to continue and deepen our support for a network of MERI coordinators in each of the countries where we have started already to operate. It is uh, Albania, Bulgaria, Croatia, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, Macedonia and Montenegro, but uh, as I said, it's, it's just the beginning for programmatic and organizational coordination. Our existing partners and local government associations will be deeply involved in the coordination of MERI in their respective countries. In preparation to pilot the MERI initiative and to identify good local level interventions for future possible exchanges, the Making the Most program announced the call for nominations of best local Roma inclusion practices and received cases from 15 European countries who are represented here. Let me uh, list them. Uh, we are very proud of your engagement from all the countries, Albania, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Croatia, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Montenegro, Macedonia, Romania, Serbia, Slovakia, Slovenia, and Spain. Congratulations to your uh, uh, response to our call. To acknowledge these best practices, to acknowledge these best practices and to formally launch the MERI initiative, the European Commission and the Open Society Foundations, MTM, partnered to convene the MERI conference today which will be followed by an award ceremony. Out of 104 local practices, 24 were selected this time by a Mary Selection Committee as worthy of acknowledging, sharing and debating at the Mary workshops today. The selected cases have merited recognition by the following criteria, governance issues, level of commitment, and involvement of a given municipality, quality of interventions in education, employment, health, housing, community development, and comprehensive approaches to inclusion, participation and representation of Roma and non-Roma organizations in municipality-led activities, sustainability of municipal interventions in terms of financial and institutional uh, capacities. 24 have been selected for today's uh, discussion and we very much hope that uh, the next time around, two years from now, we will have an even bigger trouble to select a few out of many, many great practices that make the fishermen fish well. Um, a select number of mayors and their municipalities, ladies and gentlemen, who demonstrated exceptional achievement in Roma inclusion locally, will be presented awards for best achievement at the awards ceremony tonight. I hope that this will inspire even more local effort on behalf of Roma integration. And, we, uh, and when we gather next in two years' time, we will be able to even improve uh, the quality of the presented uh, cases. But, and we also hope that in the meantime, and that is the most important thing between the two, uh, two uh, 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 events, you will seek each other's partnership. We have left in the conference plenty of room for networking today, tomorrow, and we really hope that you will find uh, the, the synergies. It's always easy for us proudly to present our case it's equally important, even more important, to seek out the advice of our fellow mayors, our fellow local leaders, our fellow NGO leaders,
to improve our practices and I really encourage you to do that. And besides that, I wish you not only a very good conference, but a great uh, pleasure in Budapest, a very welcoming city, I believe. And uh, again, I wish you uh, very, very good personal and professional connections. So thank you very much. The Mary Network is open. Thank you, Mr. Mijé, that you launched the uh, official Mary Network now. Um, thank you also distinguished guests and speakers. Thank you, Mr. Kazachai. Thank you, Mr. Mutasa. Thank you, Mr. Zardi, for your opening speeches and for giving us an inspiration to continue to work in this regard. Uh, now we will resume for a coffee break uh, and we will be back at 11.30 sharp for the round table. Thank you. Hi everybody again, I think it's a it's good time to start because we are already late with 15 minutes. So uh, we will start the next, the next 